everyone. Welcome back again. So I wanted to uh, take you through Trump's transits of the uh, solar eclipse <laughs> coming up April 8th uh, through his chart. Let's see how it's going to affect him or should affect him. So anyway, hold on. Let me swap out cameras and bring you over my table. Okay, so I have uh, the charts here. I'm using the rectified birth time, which is 10, 12 a.m., uh, rather than the 10.54 a.m., but, you know, there are so many other astrologers out there using the 10.54 a.m. You can go there or to their channels if you like. I've, I use this time because it's proven to be uh, accurate in the past, I, and I <laughs> found out about it. I discovered it years ago when I used to be on Facebook. I, I was friends with a master astrologer by the name of Alfie Lavoie, and found out that he had created a rectification program. He's 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 literally um, close to ninety or or is ninety, and he had been doing astrology since his first Saturn return. So you know before his thirtieth uh, birthday, uh, he'd been doing it professionally. So it's kind of like I think he probably just about jumped out of the womb. You know, started studying as soon as he could. <laughs> but anyway. He created this rectification program, and he put in 25 years of data on Trump's important life experiences, you know, such as like marriage, divorce, uh, most of his affairs with women, and most of all legal issues. And then he even went back as far into his childhood as when he went into military school. And so he tracked all the important life cycles. So I trust I believe that this is the right time, but if it's not for you, it's still going to work. I mean, if you don't, um, if you want to stick with the 1054, I would say still watch this video because um, the house change, notice how, um, well, I don't have the other chart here, but his with his other chart, uh, with his 1054, it just changes the ascendant 20 to 29 degrees. But it does put Mars in the 12th, which is just not like him. He's not, he doesn't operate like a guy with Mars in the 12th. <laughs> he's, he's out there. He's in our faces. That's Mars in the 1st, you know. Uh, so anyway, but still, he still has a Leo Ascendant, you know, Scorpio down here. Uh, none of the, uh, the signs change, but just the, um, the degrees on the house cusp so when, we, when we're going to with the four hot points, you know, with the Ascendant being what he attracts. I see down here is uh, his um, <laughs> very, very karmic point where, so the sun rules his ascendant, Pluto rules his uh, karmic point, the I see, the Imam Coli, which is, it, it's, it's representational, even though he doesn't have any planets down here, we just go with, you know, the energy of Scorpio and Pluto. And it's about the need to transform his past and the need to uh, go more deeply into past lives, go more deeply into his home environment and uh, psychological issues and roots, you know, ancestral roots, all those things. And, you know, we can, we've observed in this lifetime he hasn't done any of that type of work. With Aquarius on his, this hot point over here is his descendant being... Um, open enemies, relationships of all types, um, love, you know, people he would marry, people he would partner up with, um, you know, business partners like that, contracts even. With Aquarius there being ruled by Uranus, this is where he's very unpredictable and where very um, like transactional in nature where, where he will just cut and run if things aren't the way he wants and he'll put people out of his life and you know things like that same goes for with Taurus up here in the midheaven now the midheaven is uh, how a person um, relates to society it's their public image uh, it's their 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 goals well, along with the 11th but they're definitely it has to do with how he would all the ways he would structure his life in order to be um, you know having a big status. Uh, some see it as in the 10th house, the house of um, fame and fathers and things like that. So, you know, that's where 
some of the other chart, um, the 10.54 a.m., that one kind of, that, that works too. But either way, uh, for the purposes of the solar eclipse, it's important to note, oh, that's right, I wanted to let you guys know, I did a video for all of us, uh, you know, which would read very, <laughs> quite a bit differently than his chart, and I'll link uh, that video in the, in the description area below. But so it's important to, let me just go over some, some notes then that would um, help us move along here. So all solar eclipses are new moons, and you can see that here where we have the moon and, and uh, the sun at 19 degrees, 24 minutes. Chiron happened to slip in there. <laughs> so Chiron being the wounded healer, unless you go through all your wounding and process it through, um, you don't get to the gifts, right? It can be your gifts once you process it through. But for him, um, it's coming through in, the, in this ninth house, which is um, uh, his legal, uh, legal affairs and all that. So I'll get into that, you know, in a minute. But just to know that every new moon is where we are in a cycle of preparation. And because this new moon solar eclipse is at 19 degrees of Aries, we're in, so Aries, just think of, it's ruled by Mars, it's instinctual, it's about new things and going in new directions. Mm, impulsive on his part, because he, that's, you know, having Uranus and the North Node so close to the sun. Um, Oh, and it's important to note, sorry, well here, let's look at it from this chart because you can see it more easily. Uh, notice how we have Uranus, North Node, and his Sun all conjunct together and opposing the South Node and the Moon. So South Node is definitely a past life point. His Moon and Sag, that is everything geared towards politics and just putting himself out there and yeah, he has a lot to say and he's always saying things, right? Notice the preponderance of air in his chart. No grounding planets. Um, I mean, no no grounded energy, just air, 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 fire, fire, fire. A little bit of water, but it's because, you know, family issues, things like that. Uh, there's a lot of dependency, codependency dynamics in his chart that I see. Um, but anyway, let's let's go with just the important piece right here. As you can see, how the moon was at 20 degrees when he was born, conjunct literally on his south node, which tells me you know he was probably famous in his last lifetime. Has immense karma with women. Has immense karma with the public, with the families, with all with families. Think of all the souls who died with COVID. That's you know that's him. That fire, he doesn't give a shit. You know. Um, but he was born uh, just a couple of days, well, yeah, because we've got the sun at two degrees, so the sun moves one degree every day. He was born two days after a lunar eclipse. So the, And lunar eclipses are always full moon, so, right? Sun's on one side, moon's on the other. So this last, uh, the lunar eclipse that um, is that happened yesterday was really important for him. On one level, he did get uh, he did get some breaks, and that has to do with Venus still here in his eighth house. But pretty soon, Venus will be in his ninth. Neptune's going to sit there. Saturn is just has just moved in, and he will start to have even more obstacles. But I'll get into that in a minute. So it's important to know that with that. Uh, the eclipse coming in at that second decan of the sign, of which for Trump, I think it has him almost at the end of learning some lessons and the consequences and criminality. He's learned on one level, throw enough money at it, you know, just appeal, 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 delay, 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 appeal as much as you can, delay. But that's going to catch up because he's still going to have to pay. Based on what happened yesterday with the appellate court with those like five ridiculous judges, he learned yet again that with enough money he can control our judicial system. But life has a way of bringing justice. So let's focus in on his future. The, uh, he doesn't have any squares coming in. I have really tight rules with uh, eclipses. 
So I uh, and I'll, I won't say them now. You, if you're interested, in, if you're interested in that, you'll get that information in the video I did for us personally, which takes you through all the houses in your chart. Uh, so it should be very accurate as long as you know your chart. But for him, there aren't any planets. There, it's not squaring any natal planets within that one degree. And we only have the opposition uh, to Jupiter. So for him, now, now Jupiter is our planet of an overblown ego, excess. Uh, it can be healing. It can be a force for uh, all things that are wonderful and protective and loving and kind and it expands uh, awareness a lot of times. And being in the third house, it, it should have helped him with um, expanding his mind and communicating in a peaceful way. But because he natally has Chiron here, the, there's so much wounding in relationship and fairness and equality and justice that he... Um, it's, you know, it's playing out a different way for him. He Because he hasn't consciously worked on his soul. So his true spirit can't come through. Anyway, um, so what we really have to focus in on here with the solar eclipse is just the fact that it's in the ninth house. So again, it's his legal affairs, foreign relationships, courts of law, of course, with, you know, the legal affairs, uh, all types of law. We're talking spiritual law, man-made law, natural law. And so over this next six months, oh, I forgot. That's right. There, there's an important piece here. <laughs> I, I posted it in the community section yesterday, but I'll, I'll repeat it for you guys. So uh, eclipses happen every a little more than 18 years. And the last time it happened for him in this house was... Um, uh, about January 25, 2005, I think, and he married Melania. So that that's interesting there. It looks to me like maybe it was a, you know, the, the relationship with the foreign person that he married, right? Got into a contract, got into a business contract, <laughs> you know. I mean, their their relationship is very transactional. Maybe it wasn't for her in the beginning, but for the fact that she stayed, you know, we know it is. Um, also, what happened in 2005, and I think it was in September, if I remember correctly, uh, that's when the Access Hollywood video came out. Um, well, no, it didn't come out. It's when it happened. It, didn't, it came out, I think, in 2015 or before the 2016 election. But it happened when he did it, with his actions here. Or, uh, you know, speaking about, so it's important to remember also that Sag and Jupiter rule his ninth house because he's, uh, that's uh, the natal placement. But anyway, the deal with um, the access, you know, I don't have to, I won't say the words, but, you know, it's all about grabbing women's private bits because he's a star and he can do it, right? There he is with that overblown ego. Uh, so, back to ninth house. So the, the ninth house, besides all of those legal issues and foreign affairs, which is, you know, you think the ninth house is, there's a lot in that house. It has to do with publishing and media. So there we are with, you know, this, this brings through his, um, you know, getting an IPO, having his uh, untrue social <laughs> I uh, become a publicly traded platform. Now he's not; he won't be able to get any money out of that um, for probably six months or so. They're saying, uh, but then he'll he'll have access to about three billion dollars. So hopefully, all of those liens. So maybe a way he could, you know, he's I, he's not going to. I doubt he'll live another 18 years and make it around again to have this, you know, eclipse come through his ninth house again. But it could be a time where he gets enough money in where he can pay off all his debts and all these lawsuits that are coming in. I mean, he has the E. Jean Carroll, um, just because he couldn't, couldn't keep his mouth shut, right? 
couldn't couldn't just keep his mouth shut. He had to keep putting her down and defaming her, even though it, <laughs> it was proven that um, well, the judge ruled. That's it. You know, he went through a trial. They they ruled, and um, it went from five million dollars to over eighty three or eighty four or something like that. So now I think she's she gets like ninety million somewhere in there at some point. So there's that, and she's wanting to build a, a center for abused and, um, you know, for, for people, for women to heal. So hopefully that comes through. But anyway, back to this ninth house here, because this is, we're, we want to look at the houses and the polarity. So we're dealing with the ninth to the third. We're dealing with lies versus truth. We're dealing with... Um, religion. So recently we witnessed him trying to represent himself as some form of Jesus, you know, and he's the martyr. So you have to send him money so that he doesn't, <laughs> I don't know what, go broke. Basically, you know, he's trying to get us to believe he's like Jesus on some level. And yeah, so there's that. That's ninth house. Um, and then yesterday, so that was that would be March 25th, in case you watch, you're watching this much later, under the influence of the full moon lunar eclipse, he said, you can't have an election in the middle of a political season. What? What? There you go. Ninth house can't handle, you know, what's coming in there. Too much energy. He can't deal with it. And it's hitting his mind. And, and so there's this, you know, issue there. He's like, he's crossed this bridge too far. And he's like, out. He's just, he's out. He also said, we just had Super Tuesday. And we had a Tuesday after a Tuesday already. What? I mean, does this sound like a mentally fit man? And hey, you know. Mercury retrogrades on him already, and by the time this, you know, this eclipse happens, and eclipses are like portals. It, they st they really have influences weeks before they begin, and even though I have a specific time here, which for him, you know, over Palm Beach, Florida, is two twenty two p.m., but really, it's already started, right? We get the lunar first, and then the solar, and we we're in eclipse season, and so after April 8th, we can effectively look at, um, you know, this portal for the next six months. And upon him, notice Mercury's up here, retrograde in his ninth house. As Mercury retrogrades, it's going to go back, I think, to 15 degrees. You know, the the other planets will move forward. The sun and the moon will be way over here by then. But Mercury's going to stay there in the ninth house. So people who are... Religious are listening to him and going, wait, what? What's going on? And they're wondering if it's the truth. And and he's, <laughs> as Mercury re retrogrades back to that 15 degrees, it's going to directly oppose his Chiron and Jupiter where he already has trouble telling the truth and he already has so much relationship karma. And so there's all that. Now, jury selection is set for April 15th on the Hush Money, Stormy Daniels, Karen McDougal case where they will be uh, testifying, where he's been indicted. This is a criminal case uh, for interference in the 2016 election because he tried to, tried to get them, well, he did get them to, to sign catch and kill releases. And... Um, but the <laughs> problem is, is it came out thanks to Michael Cohen. And um, yeah, so anyway, I won't talk about that because you guys already know about it. Anyway, on April 20th, the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction will fall in his 10th house. See how we, we have it here already? By April 20th, Jupiter will be conjunct Uranus. We'll all have this. And this can be a really lovely transit for all of us who have been working to wake up and be enlightened. But for him, no. It's going to be an explosion of some type. 
with his career because, and this would be true no matter which, no matter if we're using the 1054 AM chart or my rectified time here with Alfie Lavoie's um, program. So the deal here is that Jupiter comes in and expands things. Bumping up against Uranus, Uranus is the change agent and it can be shocking. And in this 10th house of career, uh, I think his public image is going to blow up. I doubt he's going to have increased fame. Well, he yeah, actually he could. He could become even more famous, but for the wrong reasons. So there's that. And did I mention, I, I think I forgot, I, you know, the ninth house is also the house of morals and ethics because it's, you know, it's ruled by spiritual law, natural law. It's, it's our house of, um, well, the, the 12th can be as well, but immigration, it's our house of um, wisdom and divination. I mean, I, I love the ninth house because I have Mars in the ninth house. So for me, it's all about divination. But for him, uh, I think he just wants to control the courts. So, yeah. Now, let's see, what else? SCOTUS is scheduled to hear the um, oral arguments regarding his appeal for immunity which I don't know why they even took it on. They should have just said, oh, D.C. DC Court of Appeals is, is doing fine. We'll just kick it back. But no, they took it on, so we'll see how that goes. But anyway, this will be in his house of career and reputation. So I'll, I'll do some card readings later on on all of this, but just to stick with astrology. It, I would say that he's, going, he's in for a rude awakening, this can be a reversal of fortune. Just to have Uranus in the 10th house, if you're not clean, you, you can run into trouble, major trouble. It can, and it can be very shocking. And in the natal chart, I forgot to say this, you guys. Um, I studied a lot of evolutionary astrology, and while, while I don't really go with uh, um, everything, just because of the, yeah, I'm not going to say it, but... I stopped studying it because of some of the beliefs of the founder that just didn't jive with me at all. But anyway, it is known in evolutionary astrology that Uranus is connected to soul shocks, wherever it is in your natal chart. In, in this chart, or even in the other, the 1054 AM, it's in his 10th house. Okay, so 10th house is father, masculinity status, reputation. So, and in Gemini, it would be the mind, the way he thinks, very, very dualistic, right? Like it's all this either or. Gotta have money, power, fame, or I'm nobody. That's his deepest soul shock that he chose to, you know, to he chose to incarnate at this time and into this family in order to work this through. But, he, he just, he hasn't. He hasn't been working on it. And then, dare I say anything about all this, you know, 12th house, to you know, natally to have Pluto here. And this transit going over doesn't really matter. This is the part of fortune. I, I, we'll talk about that. Okay, so um, the having Pluto, Venus, and Saturn. So Venus and Saturn is why he's able to make money, but he does it in these really dirty, underhanded ways. Uh, and, you know, I believe he was born into a mobbed-up family. I, there's proof that his father was in bed with a Genovese family. And then, um, now for spiritual people, the 12th house can be excellent, but he's, he's you know, he's not he's not working it that way. But anyhow... Um, Genovese family, you know, they, they kind of went by the way of, oh, Russians came into uh, Brighton Beach, and, and, you know, all that's documented, so you can, you can read Craig Unger's books about that, um, where he has that documentation, but anyway, or you, you, there's probably tons of documentaries and information out there, but so Russia's, Russia took over the Russian 
uh, crime, whatever, you know, syndication going, going into the USA, uh, bumped out the Italian mob family. And so from, I think from Donald Trump's birth, he was probably, he was born into a mobbed up uh, situation. We can see this in conjunct here to Saturn. So it, here we are with more of this family karma. His entire life, he's been challenged to make an adjustments based on coming into this, this um, you know, families, his father's, especially Saturn usually relates to the father, uh, his father's karma. And rather than complete it and make those adjustments, what he did is, you know, he just took all the lessons his father taught him and just kept working it. And um, so it's making money, you know, from all the wrong ways, not not clean, not um, not clear. And of course, with Mercury Neptune, we can see that now. I, would, I won't say this for everyone because a lot of people have Mercury square Neptune. Do not take this on for you. But for him, this is where he really has a hard time speaking the truth. And, and he really has a hard time with, with fairness and justice. He, he knows how to work it. He's learned how to work it. This is his transactional nature in the, his second house of money. Neptune in his second house of money tells me that uh, it can dissolve if he doesn't get into fairness and equality. And it's retrograde. All of these, um, wherever there's, so yes, Ceres retrograde and Neptune retrograde and Jupiter retrograde, wherever the... the um, degrees are in red. Now Ceres over here is where, and you can see he's got, you know, he's got the aspect of the architect. He's got this um, grand air trine. It, I mean, he has a lot of fast moving contacts, uh, contacts and which could bring him lots of opportunity. But um, it doesn't mean that just because these are blue that it's harmonious. It, sometimes it's just that they're contacts and then things, the energy just bings around. <laughs> Wasn't it him that said bing bing all the time? Anyway, with Ceres over here, this uh, has to do with sometimes separation and grief. It has to do with his maternal imprint. And she wasn't around much. Her, his mother, and she had mental problems, mental issues, mental illness. And she also had a terrible, terrible physical time giving birth to him. And I think that's probably why his birth date was recorded so much later than the 10-12 time here. Um, yeah. So, oh, that's so funny. I moved my hard drive and um, I'm hearing it make all kinds of noises over there. If you, if you hear weird sounds, I'm not sitting here farting. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so back over here to his transits. Let's focus over here. Uh, with Pluto in the sixth house, now I won't, I won't do everything because I'll, I'm going to do it later. I'll, I'm just going to stick with what's really relevant right now because I, I will come in later and do his... Um, um, solar return, you know, I'll do that early in June, and then I'll do the rest of his transits and his progressions and solar arcs and all of that, so so you're set with seeing what's going on through, or maybe I'll even do it before June, so we can see how it's going to go for him through, all the way through election time. Um, so anyway, one of the, one of the other things with this uh, moon in the fifth house it's this is important to because the fifth house has everything to do with romance and love affairs and uh, you know drama sometimes I mean it can there can be lots of other good things but he's used it as being this like playboy figure like a playboy kind of personality but with Venus and Saturn over here and like I said that adjustment to the moon. This has him, this aspect has him trapped in his karmic past. So this entire lifetime, he could have turned it around, but he hasn't worked it through. He just, you know, I guess I don't need to keep saying that. But anyway, uh, what is happening soon will be, see how Jupiter's here, Uranus is here. These two are coming together. See how Uranus is at 21 degrees 
his ascendant is at 21 degrees. So he has Uranus square his ascendant. His ascendant, of course, is ruled by the sun because, um, you know, the sun rules Leo. So there's going to be a spotlight. He's going to be, the, the ascendant magnetizes. So he's going to be attracting a spotlight that is very shocking to his career. And this is happening, uh, it, it's, already, it's already here, right? But see how Uranus is at 10 degree, or 21 degrees 10 minutes? His ascendant is 21 degrees 43 minutes. This will be exact here uh, on April 16th, and it will last through April 24th. So there's, there's that. Uh, in May, we have Saturn transiting Saturn over here, squaring his natal Uranus. See, it's uh, 14 degrees to 17, so we've got this approaching energy, which is really strong. And uh, that lasts from uh, May 3rd. It, it's within orb from May 3rd to um, June 4th in, in that tight orb there. So Saturn to Uranus is that uh, there are testing limits here. Saturn can be a wall. Saturn can be the government. Saturn can be a wall, a delay. Uh, it's basically testing reality. And he, I think he's testing the reality of 8th house uh, grifting off other people's income and resources. But there's a delay here that's going to be coming in because of, you know, that'll be shocking to him, right? Soul shocks. Like, he, he I don't think he's going to get everything he wants. And he's never going to be happy anyway, no matter how much money the poor guy has or, or makes or gets or no matter how much money, no matter how that, no matter the women, no matter any of that, all that, that second chakra stuff, he's not going to be happy because he doesn't love himself and there's no way he's going to be able to love anyone else. So truly, that it's just, you know, that's, that's awful. So anyway, um, then later on in June, Jupiter does, uh, transiting Jupiter here, does trine his Neptune. So um, that will be, that could be an expansion, maybe even a little blowing up, a little excess of all of his delusion. You know, Neptune can be source energy. It can be really beautiful, but uh, for him... He uses it to grift, he uses it to obfuscate, to hide. He has his cult following. So maybe he'll get more cult members, and meanwhile, they're learning some challenging lessons. So anyway, I think that's almost it. The only other things I'm noticing is like um, Saturn at 14 degrees here is in an approaching square to his moon in south node, karmic past. And in the fifth house, it rules his children. And I'm like, I'm wondering, where's Ivanka? And where's Jared, you know, when it comes to uh, rescuing him? Why haven't they loaned him money? Right? Don't they have, they have lots of money. Of course they do. So where are they? Because <laughs> this is the house of children. Oh, that's right. Transiting Ceres is there. So we've got grief and separation. And, it, you know, Ceres has been squaring the nodes, going from his third house to his ninth. So there's that. You know, that transit that's been happening. Um, of course, like I said, with Pluto in the tenth house, we're talking health issues and employee problems. And because it trines Nept his natal Neptune, things are dissolving in those relationships later on. When they have to, um, you know, and even Walt Nada and, and any, you know, when, when they're sat before a court, I think they will flip. Just look what, um, look how it's gone for um, Weiselberg. And then other important, uh, that important transits that are happening right now. We have an inconjunct coming from his moon and south node up to Uranus. 
So remember Uranus transiting Uranus being the change agent in his 10th house of career or status. And the adjustment is coming because Uranus is up here saying, hey, <laughs> open up and heal or not, or you're going to have some shocks. And it's hitting his emotional body and his past life karma. So there's that. Emotional body and literally body, you know. Your emotional body lives in your body, so there's that. The moon rules the body in the um, chart. Uh, okay, what else? The sun being at 19 degrees, so this eclipse is also uh, in a trine to uh, Sag. We've got a lot of fire coming in here. So this eclipse, even though... I um, I don't usually go with the the orbs of using the the eclipse that tight. We'll I'll just focus on the sun and the moon separately. And let's say it's not an eclipse. We've got the sun shining a light on his past, his karmic past, especially with women. And then he's got an emotional reaction that could be coming in quickly. So th I think this eclipse is going to hit him hard. Um. Yeah, so the rest of it I think I'll wait because uh, these would be transits coming in later on. But just, you know, most importantly is that because he has natally uh, Neptune in the second house of personal finances, and then you can see uh, we've got the trine to Pluto. So Pluto's at one degree. It's going to take a long time to, you know, move forward. And it'll even retrograde back a little bit into um, Capricorn later on in September. But then it'll be, I think it's, I think it's January. Is it early January next year? I think so. It'll be in Pluto for 20 years. So he won't live. I don't think he'll live to see Pluto make it to his seventh house, which would actually be pretty awful. Um, well, when it comes to relationship, but he's already, he already self-sabotages in that department anyway. Um, but notice here how uh, Pluto is in a trine over here to Neptune, an approaching trine. So every degree that Pluto moves forward for, you know, the rest of his, well, it's going to be years, but it, it, it's moving forward. The rest of his life is going to be health issues, uh, will be health issues. And this uh, trine we have going on between Neptune and Pluto to the second house of his personal finances, to the sixth house of how he structures his days. It has everything to do with um, his health. It, his ability to analyze things, his ability to uh, work within a system, his work habits, his ability to organize himself, um, and the service that he gives. Well, so far I think the only service he's really given is to show us all the all the holes in our constitution that need to be patched, and you know the Presidential Powers Act that needs to be passed, and all these different things that. You know, it's going to be that cleanup on 45, aisle 45 for, you know, years. But he's been the gift to help us wake up and see the, you know, smell the cat box. So, but back to the, the trying to Neptune here. Neptune has the power to dissolve, right? So Pluto, the slower moving planet, uh, through his sixth house, it, it's also going to, besides... Um, Blowing up his health, transformation, elimination. Uh, this this is literally him needing to buy, you know, wear depends because it's, you know, well, elimination up, is up in the eighth house as well too. But Pluto is a planet of elimination. Scorpio down here is that intensity, uh, you know, natally how he has Scorpio at the IC. That, that's his wanting, you know, intensity. He's come from a place of intensity and he doesn't really know anything different because he hasn't worked to balance and heal. Neptune in Libra in the second house afforded him that. He had that opportunity, but no, he didn't do it. So dissolving in explosive ways to eliminate his own personal finances and his ability to serve, his ability to even have a healthy, you know, last chapter of his life. 
So, okay. Uh, that's it. I'm just going to get it uploaded and send you guys big hugs. <laughs> okay. Bye.